As all those who've watched my fishing programs on television will know, only very, very rarely do huge, truly memorable catches come along completely by accident. As with any other sport or pastime, taking into account lady luck, or her absence of course, you generally get from fishing what you prepare to put into it. Which is why anglers who carefully research each fishery, particularly those less pressurised and off the beaten track, and then plan trips accordingly, taking weather and water conditions into account, are far more likely to enjoy success on a regular basis. What's more, by studying natural history and basing your approach on watercraft, and practising the arts of concealment, observation, stealth, and opportunism, etc., even the very largest specimens of most species can be caught using enjoyable, close-range, quite basic methods and on simple baits, whether natural or manufactured. Which is why I've purposely chosen throughout the following hour's viewing to float fish for specimen bream and carp. Actually, because bream could sometimes be seen porpoising during mild weather when out pike fishing this mysterious Norfolk lake, I always vowed that one day I would specifically set about catching them. And so eventually, on a misty dawn in the late summer of 94, when everything was just right, having beforehand heavily ground baited a 13 feet deep area for two consecutive evenings, I fished a slider float using lobtail for bait and almost instantly away went the float, within minutes of anchoring quietly some 30 yards from the swim marker. Now I can't do anything with this fish. This is just kiting slowly along the bottom. It feels a, a very big bream indeed. It really does feel big. Whoa! Little did I know then, while that monstrous bream battled away, that I was about to enjoy the catch of a lifetime and one of those truly rare and memorable angling experiences. Come on, slowly does it. Whoa, it's off again. Incredible power, absolutely incredible power. They really have. And with four pound line, you can't hurry them. You just cannot, cannot hurry them. I had in fact started with two identical slider float outfits, each presenting a lobtail on a size 8. But with so many fish in the swim, heads down and feeding in earnest, I quickly wound the second one in to avoid confusion. And it's well I did, because those big bream fought so powerfully and for so long, they often went completely around the dinghy, causing me to net them from behind it over 40 yards from where they were first hooked. Oh, that's absolutely enormous. That must be one of the biggest bream I've ever caught. Let's unhook it straight away. Oh, oh, that's a bit of luck. Look at that. The, the hooks come out in the net. That's what's left of the, <laughs> the lobtail. I think I'm going to weigh this fish straight away because it's so big. It's a magnificent creature. Now, this net weighs about a pound when it's wet. Zero these scars, which weigh up to 12 pounds. All right. Oh, it's gone. That's gone right off the clock. <laughs> That's over 12 pounds. That's ridiculous. Right. Let's get some that weigh up to 30. Just zero them. Now then, let's have a look. Oh, that's huge, look at that. Right, that's settling on, whoops, about 12 pound eight. That means it's 11 and a half. <laughs> what an incredible creature. Look at that. Float fishing on four pound line. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> That's fantastic. Let's put him in the net and catch some more. Before I make another cast, let me show you my rig. I'm just going to put a, a lobtail on. Big Bream love lobtails. And I've got it direct to the four pound line on a size eight. Look at that. That's beautiful. And 10 inches above that is just a, a single BB shot to keep the bait on the bottom. 
And then to fish this 13 foot swim, I've got a, a big sliding float made for me by my old mate, Terry Smith of Sheffield. And it takes three swan shot. Just above that's a bead. And then I've got the sliding stock knot up the line about a foot over depth. It's the, really the only way to fish these very deep lakes. You just watch the line go through the float. You can see the float, it'll cock and it'll start to, start to waggle. There it is, it's come up. That's on the bottom nicely. And I'll just tighten up to that a little bit. There we are. Sun's just starting to break through now. The only trouble with that, of course, is... Whoops, hello, we've got a bite straight away there. Yes! I was waiting for that to go away, but it wasn't going to go. I took that on the drop, just as I was tightening it up. Look at that, would you believe it? Oh! <laughs> That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. They do go, these bream. Oh, that's kiting strongly to the left now. I do hope this sun doesn't rise too quickly and spoil this because these big bream are really on at the moment and this is the best bream fishing and the biggest bream I've ever caught in 40 years of freshwater fishing. A lot of these fish are between 9 and, and 12 pounds. Now what size is this one? Oh, they've got incredible power. I'm trying to go under the boat. Mm, keep it away from my, Whoa! Keep it away from... Keep it away from my anchor chain. Oh, anchor rope, rather. Never use a chain in boats, because it makes such a lot of racket. Oh, it's trying to get under. No. Oh, that was lucky. Look at that. Incredible fight they give. They really do. <laughs> Look at that. That's incredible. Oh. <laughs> With a four pound... Whoops. <laughs> With a four pound line, you can't be too cavalierish, really. But... Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. Now then, don't start going again. Let's get you in the net straight away. Lovely, look at that. Oh, just gone in. Let's swing round and have a look at this one. Oh, <laughs> oh look at that. They're all big fish. They're all big fish. Look at that. Isn't that a superb creature? Look at that. Huge, deep back. Beautiful scale pattern. Let's unhook him straight away. Now then, where's the worm? That was amazing. How... <laughs> There's the old lobtail. That was whoops. That was amazing how that took that on the drop. For a second, I thought the, the float needed to reposition. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Well, Wilson, you better make the most of this day. They don't happen that often. Whoa! <laughs> They're lively too. <laughs> Look at the swans here. The, the cob's chasing the pens like mad at the moment. Anybody would think spring's in the air instead of mid-September. What a lovely morning. The bream are going absolutely balmy. The sun's just breaking through the trees there. And there's promise of more to come. Love those big floats, the way they come up and just slowly settle like that. Lovely. Earlier on, I was fishing with two rods, but when the bream moved into the swim, found the ground bait, the bites are so hectic, it's silly fishing with two rods, so I've put one away and I'm going to hold me rod and watch for those lovely slow bites. 
got about two inches of the tip showing. Sometimes you get a really exaggerated tilt over and then it just slowly glides away. What you don't want to do is strike too early with big bream. They like to grab a bait and run along the bottom with it. Got a little bit of draw on the water here as well. And so the float looks as though it's moving slightly one way or the other. You can see further out there, I've got an old bottle that I shall take in at the end of the session and that's the marker for the outer edge of my ground bait. Hello, here we go. Whoa, I thought the float dipped slightly then. Yes, it's on. Oh, missed it. Now, I've put a fair amount of ground bait into this particular swim. Yesterday evening, just before it got dark, put about a 10 pounds of dry crumb, along with a loaf, well soaked and all mashed up. And I put some well fermented and swollen malting barley, a couple of pints of that and a couple of pints of hemp and a few casters. There's a good old smell and I scattered it all around this area, about the size of half a tennis court, I would think between my float and the marker, so that I'm hoping to get bites from the edge of the shoal and not pull them a hook fish through it. If, if bites dry up, I might fish a little bit further out, but for the moment, I'm trying to catch the fish from my edge of the shoal so as not to scare them and draw them away easily. There's probably like 100, 150 really big bream in this lake, and they're so wary, it, this is a a very rare morning indeed. You don't get many mornings when you can float fish and catch double figure bream seemingly with ease. It really is a rare morning. That has to be put in perspective. But of course the technique is no different if you're fishing for five pound bream with a sliding float. You've got very deep water, there's no way I could fish this swim with a, a fixed float. And so the sliding float is the answer really. It doesn't matter there's three or four swan shot on the line to get the bait down there because when the bream trundle it along the bottom the float is just as sensitive in its tip section. In fact when you're fishing big still waters you get a tremendous an underwater tow or draw or you get a surface chop. If you try and fish too light you're forever straining and, and saying to yourself is the float there or did it go or was that a twitch or not so it's, it's best to have quite a large tip showing and then you can relax for most of the time. Hello, there we go, there's a bite. I'm just gonna let that move off with it. It just rose slightly and went down again. There's lots of little perch in here, so it could have been a little perch. No, it's moving away now. Yes! Well, this is a good fish. They've got some incredible power, these bream. It's actually <laughs> twisting the boat round. The sun's nearly burnt all the mist away, and yet there's still the odd big fish there. Still the odd big fish to, to take those worms. They really do love lobworms, big bream. There's no doubt about it. If you want big bream, put on a worm. That's what we're talking. Wherever I've been in Europe, Sweden, the Chlorelvan River, Ireland, the Shannon, and now to a secret Norfolk lake, worms the bait. There's no doubt about it. There's something about the, the worm, that, the aggressiveness and the fact that it's animal and it's got a lot of, whoa, that's a big fish. The fact that it's got a lovely smell and it's natural. The odd lobworm and brandling finds its way into lakes, particularly rivers of course, but you've got bloodworms in, in lakes, the larva of the common midge fly, 
Whoa, that's a lovely fish. Whoa, look at that. And so, although they're much smaller, bream are used to eating worms. That's an incredible fight. I never caught bream that have fought this much before, but then I've never caught bream that are that big either. Whoa, it's pulling my arm off. This is one of those days that end up in a dream and you wake up with the alarm clock in the morning and the missus said, you had a restless night, dear. <laughs> I'm going to pinch myself. No, I'm, I'm, it's, it's daytime and I'm catching all these fish. It's incredible. Look at that. It's another double. I don't believe it. Look at that. Well, I just don't know. That is... Oh, my net keeps saying that it's going to... That's another double-figure bream. Well, I think I'm going to weigh that straight away. Let's have a look. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> well, that's £13.4. That means it's £12.4. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. Look at that. Beautiful bream. Absolutely beautiful fish. There you are. Goodness me, those swans are going balmy this morning. Absolutely balmy. Other than that, there's just a few birds in the trees. It really is a lovely morning. A classical September's dullness as you get the chill in the evenings this time of the year. You always get a miss first thing, and it really it's lovely to be out afloat. I think a lot of anglers miss out on boat fishing, whether they can't swim or, or whatever it is, or they can't handle the boat and the techniques, I don't know. But there's a, there's a sort of a, a mystical quality about boat fishing, there really is. Just going to rest that for a second and put a few broken worms out. I like to keep them, keep them coming. <laughs> Those swans, look at them. They're so aggressive. There we are, just a few samples of hook bait every now and again, rather than try and dump a load of ground bait on top of them now, it's a, it's a recipe for scaring them. Thought that float went. Yes, we're away again. Yes, here we are. Oh, that was a slow dip then. <laughs> One of the worms that I'd catapult it catapulted in had just hit the surface and, and I saw the float just draw us. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. What's this? Go oh, look at that. Whoa. People scream don't fight. Whoa, that's incredible. This is a big fish, I can't do anything with this. I just hope it doesn't reach my marker. And I hope the swans don't knock the line as well. Ooh, that is a big fish. That's really going well. Wonderful bites. They, whoops, they really are wonderful bites. Ooh, I had time to put the catapult down, pick up the rod and Give it a nice sweep back. Now I've got to be careful because this is a very big fish and on four pound line 
I don't want to hurry it. Whoops. Ooh. That's going beautiful. Those sliding floats are Terry Smiths. They, they really do work and they look so nice as well. I just felt the sliding stop knot go through the tip ring and that's when you've got to be careful because if a big, oh, that is a big fish. If a big fish then makes a dive, the, the sliding stop knot can get caught in this small diameter tip ring. Oh, look at that. And you've had it. Oh, look at that. These fish are averaging double figures. I don't believe it. Look at that. Where's the worm up the line? Look. Oh, another bream that's longer than the landing there. Well, I just don't believe this. Oh, oh. I just don't believe this sort of sport. There's the worm. Look at that enormous grey bream. <sighs> I just don't know. Now a lot of people when they're slider float fishing, they fish too light. I've got three swan shot there taking the bait down. It could be four or five, really. And if you haven't got big shots like that to get the, the bait down quickly, it never goes through the, the swivel float connector, you see? That's running very freely there. The trouble is, to run freely, it needs to have a large eye, and sometimes it might go over the sliding stop knot, so I always put that little bead there, just as a stopper, rather like I do when I'm pike fishing. I'll just dunk this in the edge and show you how effective it is. Now watch. I'll just lower that down. Now watch how quickly those swan shots go down to the bottom. There we are. I'm just sh I've shaken the sliding stop knot out. There it goes down now. The float cocks. And that's perfect. And that bottom shot is just resting on the bottom. Right, let's have another cast. There must be an awful lot of bream down there at the moment over that ground bait to get as many bites as I'm getting. It's invariably only a wait of two or three minutes before there's some sort of activity. Thank you. Straight across the line. Well, that's a sign of a good sunk line. Whoops, here we go. We're getting a bite as well as the swan. Yes, we're in. Look at that. <laughs> well, I thought for a second the swan might have picked that up. The float just dipped gently and tilted over. Whoa, it's another good fish. They're all good fish. Look at that. Four pound line stretched to the maximum. Got to be so careful. I tend to alter the clutch throughout the fight so that when it's on a short line, I slacken off. I'm having to slacken off now because this fish is really, it's doing what I don't want it to do. It's going right through the shoal. But it's very big and very heavy. The fight of big bream is really quite something else. You don't often experience it, and so you, there's not that many chances in a, in a fishing life to, to enjoy it, but they're very fast and incredibly heavy. Really not that much different to a, a, a very large tench. This fish is, is heavy, and it's keeping way down. Whoa, and it's going. I can't do anything with that. That's still going. It's still going. I don't know how big the bream go to in this lake, but having had them this morning to over 12 pounds, they could be anything. 
they really could be anything. It's quite frightening. And this is the first time that I've ever fished this lake for these bream. It just shows you what a wonderful off chance. Ooh. Mm. Come on. Keep away from that side of the boat. I don't want you going around that anchor chain. That's a beautiful fish. Look at the size of that. Oh, he's got the line caught round one of his fins. Oh. Woo. This is a very big fish. A very big fish. It amazes me they're still feeding in this sunlight too. Oh, look at that. That's colossal. That's well into double figures. Well into double figures. Now come on, don't let's lose you now. Whoa. Look at the size of that. That's over a foot thick. Deep rather. <laughs> oh, the hook's just in the bottom lip there. Come on, don't come out now. Come in the net. Come on. Two seconds more. Yes, look at that. That is the biggest bream I've ever caught. I swear it. Oh. Ah. Oh. Look at that. That is absolutely enormous. Absolutely enormous. Where's the hook? Just in the bottom lip. Whoops, there we are. Well, Wilson, oh, look at that. I don't think that fish has ever been caught before. Look at it. <laughs> I'm going to rename this Dream Lake. Dream Lake. That is a, shall I say it? That is a clunker. <laughs> Let's weigh him straight away. Right. I won't bother with the scales that only weigh to 12 pounds. I'll put him straight on on the set that go up to 32. Now the wet the net weighs a pound when it's wet. Let's see what this goes. I know this is my biggest bream because I've never seen one that size before. That is incredible, look at that. Now that is 14 pound, between nine and 10 ounces. Hovering on the 10, that means that is 13 pounds, 10 ounces. Now, six or seven years ago, that would have been the British record. <sighs> Look at that's beautiful. What a fish. <laughs> There's swans charging about here all over the place. Now, don't you hit my float. Cool, look at that, he's missed it by about three foot. Just had a slight twitch. Now, they're not as fast on the lob tails as they were before, but there's fish still in the swim. As long as this sun doesn't get too bright, it's just burning the mist off now. It really is going to... Just 
cutting to my left now. Feels a very heavy fish. <laughs> they're all heavy, really. I'm amazed they're still feeding. It's lovely to play big fish on a 13 foot float rod. It really is a lightweight carbon float rod that's really designed for roach and bream and chub and smaller bream, mind. And here we are, playing fish averaging double figures on four pound line. You just cannot, oh, it's off. I think this is the, well, I don't think it's the most fabulous bream session that I've ever had in all my life. I've never caught so many big bream at one time or on such an enjoyable method. Catch fish float fishing, I, I think I prefer that on light line. It's only four pound, remember, and these fish are, are averaging double figures. I've, I've, I've never had such enjoyable fishing. Yes, we're in. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Whoa, that's really going. Whoa. It's pulling the boat round. Stuck in a wee bed there. Come on. Oh, it's out again. Whoa, it went bang straight into a patch of weed then. Straight into it. Whoa, actually, it's a big perch. <laughs> How about that then? <laughs> well, would you believe it? The bream have obviously gone off the feed now and the perch have moved in, but what lovely perch. Well, after so many double figure bream it really is lovely to, to whoops take the hook out to catch a perch must be the best part of two pounds i would think look at that that's beautiful absolutely beautiful i think what i'll do now i'll fish on catch a few more perch and then we'll have a good look at the bream that's a clonker too Well, as you can see, I've gently brought the keep net into the bank here because there's quite a lot of fish in it. In fact, I put three back out there, including two 11 pounders, and I've decided to let these go in the shallow water so that we can have a good look at them. They really are superb fish, and this is my best catch of bream ever. It really is. Whoops. I mean, we're talking all double figure fish, these. Look at them. Whoa. Lovely to see them swim away strongly, too. This might be the biggest one. I just don't know. There's several of 12 and 13. I, I mean, look at that. Whoops. <laughs> that's, well, that's definitely four doubles. Oh, here's another one. That's five. They're immense fish. I don't think I've ever caught bream that are so deep anywhere before. This, I think, is the biggest one. Whoops. I don't know, there were a couple of 13s. Look at that. <laughs> that is absolutely, whoops. <laughs> Wonderful. Back you go. There we are. Well, that's six. Here's another double. That's seven, whoops. Where you go. I can't believe this, really. Whoa. 
That's eight. He's off. Oh. And that's nine. And that's it. Nine double figure bream. I don't think I'll ever, as long as I live, ever have a better case than that. <laughs>